Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once more, we are just thankful to God to be alive. Aren't you glad that you're alive? Well, we're happy that you could be with us this morning. And if you are there, we welcome you. And of course, those who might be joining us a little later on, we certainly would like to say that we would appreciate your presence with us. We hope you've had a wonderful week. Of course, remember, this Know Your Bible program can be seen, can be viewed and listened to every Sunday morning. It's when we premiere at 7 a.m. And of course, remember, the content remains on the channel so you can go to Church Media TT at any time and pull up whatever lessons that you want to look at, look at again or perhaps that you didn't get. So we are looking here at the greatest prayer ever prayed. Marvelous indeed. But we want to remind you to please share with your friends. You know we are living in a time when people are stressed and distressed but they are desperate and they are grabbing at a straw in terms of religious beliefs. So the word of God often passes through and never gets noticed for what it really is. We have at large reduced the word of God mostly to just what we think it really is and not what God said about it. So uh, we want you to make sure that you subscribe if you haven't, uh, click notification. And by doing that, what happens is that whenever we have new content, your device will alert you to the fact that we have something on there and that would be a really good thing. So let's take a quick moment to go to God in prayer and then we will dive straight into our lesson for this morning. Father, we just want to say thank you, Creator God, for bringing us into this world. We know, Lord, it was never intended to be like this, but here we are. And uh, Father, we thank you that you have not left us in the dark, but that you have given us your word so that we could be enlightened as to what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. Help us to open our hearts, Father, to receive your word so that we can know what your will for us is. We know that when we read your word, we understand the deception that took place at the beginning and how that continues to exist in our world, Father, and that the evil one does not want us to come to know the truth. So help us to be wise and uh, to make good decisions, Lord, to allow your word to guide and direct our path. I ask for your guidance and counsel that as we declare your word today, Lord, and every time that it will be the truth as revealed and that the Holy Spirit will bring conviction to the hearts of many who are searching and hungering that they might come to know and obey the truth before it is too late. Bless our nation. Be with us, Lord. Help us, Father, that we will strive to show forth your excellencies and you will protect us in a world of shame and disgrace and a world of crime and decadence, Lord. We ask that you protect us and keep us. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay, so in the first program, we just took a little while to establish, you know, uh, the, the, the path or the road to what we are going to be talking about. And we said that as we read those first 12 verses, we encourage you to read through the whole chapter. But we are seeing already why this is termed the greatest prayer ever prayed. Because this is not just about, you know, Father, give us this day our daily bread. This is not just about, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is much more weighty. This is the Son of God who came into the world and who is going to suffer, who is going to go through a great deal of agony in order to provide the means of redemption 
for a lost human race. Without this happening, none of us would be saved. None of us would have hope for anything better beyond this life. And you know this life is really uncertain, right? I saw a video clip uh, a week or so ago, and uh, they showed you some guys beating up another guy, and I think the guy eventually died, blood all over the street. What is our world coming to? More specifically, what a little TNT coming to? People used to talk about sweet TNT. You have to redefine that now, right? Because you never know what will happen. And so I said to myself, you could be going about your business, and you don't know when a stray bullet, some evil person, what will happen? Nobody could determine. It's not if, it's when. So let us stay close to God or secure our life in Christ while we do the best to enjoy everything we have here. But put God first and foremost in everything. So why is this then considered the greatest prayer ever prayed? We said because of the person who offered it. In John's Gospel, Jesus is revealed as he who was with God in the beginning. John chapter 1 and verse number 1. You know, we are told, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus. How do I know? Verse 14 says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, John reveals in John 1.1, 1, 1, and even 2 and 3, where he goes on to talk about nothing was made except by him and through him. So here it is that we learn that he was with God in the beginning. He who was God, in fact. He who was in the beginning with God. He who was the creator of all things, John 1, 3. He was the light of men, John chapter 1, verse number 4. This is very important. These first few verses sets the stage for what John's gospel is going to talk about. He's going to show that Jesus is divine. He is deity. He is God in the flesh. This is John's purpose. And that's why he opens up like this. To show that the word before the word became flesh. You know, was in the beginning with God and was in fact deity. Then he talks about the fact that in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So we see that he, the word, became flesh to dwell among us. But also we understand that Jesus, as proclaimed in this Gospel of John, is shown to us as the Word. That's not the Word of God. That's the Logos, which speaks of who Jesus is within his person as divine, as deity. And therefore, he is the living Word. You see, we have the written Word of God. But we have the living word of God. And Christ is the living word of God that fully displays or expresses or demonstrates who God really is. In Christ, we see the divine nature clearly without doubt. Also in this gospel, Jesus declared as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, seeing Jesus coming to him while he was baptizing in the Jordan, says... Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Also in this gospel, John chapter 1, Jesus is declared to be the Son of God. In verse 34, as the scripture says, And I, and I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God, says John. So this is important. Then he is referred to as the King of Israel. John chapter 1, verse 49. The promised Messiah. John chapter 4, 25 and 26. As the promised Messiah. He's referred to as the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. What does that mean? You know, bread is a kind of a staple food. If there were no bread at all, I don't know how a lot of people will make out. Because it's not just a breakfast item. Sometimes it's a grab a sandwich quick when you have nothing else to eat. It's the fastest thing around. No wonder why now you go in the grocery too late, you wouldn't find any bread on the shelves. Because folks are, are working hard, they're coming home late, they don't have time to go and get the needed flour. You just can't go and open the oven and a bread pop up at you. You have to put some effort into it. 
But Jesus is the bread of life. So he is essential to life. Okay? Uh, John 6 35. He is the light of the world. John chapter 8 and verse number 12. I am the light of the world. What does that mean? Darkness comes as a result of sin. Jesus comes into the world free of all sin and therefore his presence dispels the darkness. And that can allow us now to see the light of God's way so that we can you know, do what God requires of us. All of this, this is the person who is offering the prayer. The Son of God, the Lamb of God, you know, uh, the, the light of the world. This is the person, the one who is the creator, who existed in the beginning with God, who also is God. This is the person who is offering this prayer. This is the great I am. John chapter 8, 56 to 58. A wonderful passage of scripture that produced perplexity among the people to whom Jesus made a statement. For in John 8, 56 to 58, what does it say? Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? See, they didn't understand what he was saying. He's in dialogue with these Jews and they are accusing him. So he's, he's making some statement that is causing them to really be confounded. So they say to him, but you're not even 50 years old and you're telling us that you saw Abraham who existed so many centuries before. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. But now they want to kill him, right? For sure. Because... He's blaspheming. What do you mean before Abraham was born, you will? Jesus is saying, notice, I am. He didn't say, I came then at a certain time. I am means that I am always. There has been no point in time when I did not exist or a point in time when I came into existence. Jesus refers to the very essence of who he is. And they are they are upset so they pick up stones to throw at him you know because these jews sort of took their religion seriously in terms of wanting to make sure that nobody violated what they believed was right and so they felt that jesus was you know blaspheming saying these things and then of course john tells us in chapter 10 and 11 jesus is also the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. So observe, in this John's Gospel, prior to what we are reading, notice the description of who Jesus is. He also said when he went to visit Lazarus and by the family uh, of the bereaved, the bereaved family, who were now mourning the death of Lazarus, and he got there, of course, he made a statement saying that I am the resurrection and the life. What Jesus was pointing out was that he was stronger than death. And that even though Lazarus had passed, they needed not worry because he has power. Martha didn't understand his statements. She was responding to Jesus by saying, Lord, I know of the resurrection at the end of time. You know, when all the dead shall rise, that my brother will rise again. But Jesus is saying, right now, here and now, I have the power. And he was trying to, to really produce faith in her. A dynamic faith that will cause her to have hope. And to realize that, you know, the Son of God was with them and they needed not to worry. So, so what are we learning here about this Jesus? That with him, any problem or situation can be resolved. And the ultimate which is his death on the cross, the purpose of which was to save the world. Why has the Jesus died on the cross? Because he had nothing else to do? No. The real reason that Jesus died on the cross, suffered so much humiliation, anguish, torture, pain, shame and disgrace, was to save us from our sins. But you know what? We want a convenient Jesus we could just run to and say, Lord, help me now, I don't have a job, let me get one. 
Oh Father, I'm not feeling well. Heal me or so. But we're not thinking about the soul's condition and whether we have any right relationship with God. Salvation of your soul must become the primary focus of every human being's life. Everything else is secondary. And Jesus made that statement strong at the end of a sermon on the mount when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So all of what we seek first, or seek without thinking about the spiritual side of us, God promises to give them to us. If we do what? If we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You can't do that if you're going to remain in your sins. God will choose those who choose him. And so the prayer of Jesus in John 17 is great because the greatest person who ever lived and walked upon the sands of time is the one who offered that prayer. But it is also great because of the occasion that demanded the prayer. See, we will go to God on the occasion of a sick person. We will go to God on the occasion of someone who may have passed and the family is distraught. We may, to go, we may go to God on behalf of the fact that we are not seeing our way financially. We may go to God because we feel lonely and we need someone in our lives. Or we may go to God because we are having trouble relating in some situation or circumstance. Or we have problems on the job or whatever. We have trouble doing all of that. We go to God as a result. But how many people go to God and say, Lord, I am a lost sinner, Father. Help me to find the truth, to know what your word says that will bring me out from under the power of darkness and into the light that I can have a renewed and restored relationship with you. Now if I have that, let me tell you something. I have everything I need. Because I would have the blessing of God in my life. Everything I do would be blessed. My job would be blessed. I would be prosperous. What I have can go a long way longer than it will appear for many others. So this prayer is great and the greatest because the greatest person who ever lived actually made the prayer and the occasion that demanded the prayer. We're going to pick up a study on the next program to look at the occasion from the text. Now we're going to go into the text more to see the occasion that demanded this prayer of Jesus. Won't you join us then? Don't forget, subscribe if you haven't, share with your friends, Click the notification bell. And of course, we encourage you and invite you. Put a note in the chat. Tell us you are there. Put a comment. And if you have a need, tell us how we can contact you so we can share the word of God with you to the saving of your soul. Until next time, I am Mahesh Pissinath bidding you God's blessing. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he came to set me free in me. So I might live with him in glory. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he came to set the team free. So I might live with him.